Okay, it's happy Friday, everyone. Today is March 29th, and the weather's not cooperating. Wouldn't you know it that when it warms up, it also rains? Which leads me to my frequently asked questions response this week, which is going to be how to build these feeder shims. These things are valuable this time of year because they're going to help us get our bees off to a great start. And uh, I'm going to show you how to make it step by step. There's a lot of different ways to do this. I'm going to use the most basic carpentry skills you can imagine. This is my pollen feeder. I have Man Lake uh, top pollen substitute in here. I think it's Ultra B or something like that. And it has been proven scientifically to improve brood in the spring. So I want to make sure that as many resources are available to these bees as possible this year. We're trying to really get some robust uh, colonies going. And that's going to lead us to the shim that we're uh, making today. Lots of people have asked to show a step-by-step -step of how it's done. And I'm going to do that with rough cut lumber. Look what a lousy day we have. And uh, even though it's warming up, they told us it would be in the 60s on Sunday. They're dropping that right off. It's going to be 39 again. So this is going to be an important fixture in your bee yard. I have several of them. This is my rough cut lumber. Variable thicknesses, variable material, walnut, maple, cherry, oak pine you name it it's all here and it's all different thicknesses you can see where the bark was here and this is uh you know cut with a mobile mill that a friend of mine owns and i just buy the lumber from him after it's aged a little bit and this is a nice pine piece that i think we're going to use today look at the thickness inch and an eighth looks like if you're buying dimensional lumber at the hardware store this would probably be a three quarter inch piece look at this piece over 100 years old i'm saving it for something special so anyway, our deciding factor for why we're going to make it a 5-inch shim is this uh, controller here, this little wheel. I'm going to put everything in the video description, so if you want to look at any of this stuff, it'll be there. Now on the bottom here, we have a standard Man Lake uh, medium 10 frame, and we're comparing it. See the dimensions are off. It's a little larger than the Flow Hive 10 frame. Larger by about a quarter of an inch. So if you're making this uh, shim for a Flow Hive, you're going to want to cut that quarter inch down. Just measure your box and go by the outside dimensions. 16 inches, a little over in width here, and they're all 20 inches long. So we're going to make uh, that shim. I found a piece that's 5 inches wide already, so all I have to do is cut the lengths and uh, smooth it down a little bit. Let's get on with that here. I also uh, put a nice uh, straight edge along this piece of wood here so that I'll have a reference. It's 90 degrees when I'm squaring things up. Pretty easy to do. Now we're going to cut the ends off here with these uh, Diablo blades. Those things are super sharp. If you've never checked those out, look into them. Boy, they cut through wood like a saw cutting through wood. And then we're going to cut the next one here. And uh, so we're cutting the links. And then once we get that down, we're going to do a test fit up here. I want to dress this off because it's going to be like fine furniture for the bees. I know you're probably jealous of my carpentry skills here because this is what you would call a finish work. And I hope you know I'm just kidding. Somebody's going to yell at me for that. Anyway, I just stack it on top of the box here and uh, measure the inside dimensions. And that's what you'll have to do too because your material thicknesses will differ from mine. And then once I cut the pieces to length, I just dry fit everything up here and make sure that it's all good before I go to clamping and gluing and putting screws in it. Got to dress it up again. Remember, we're making furniture for the bees. Look at the rough cut aspects of this wood. I think it's really great and it's a really good insulator, but this is just a feeding shim. And these will stay on your beehives all year round. You can use them. Don't forget, get some really good wood glue and a clear 100% silicon sealant because we're going to seal all the interior joint surfaces to make sure bugs and mites and things can't hide. So here it is. We got the clamps on it, squared it up against that edge of that uh, plywood it's sitting on. And we're using two inch self tapping stainless steel screws. Get the ones with the square drive heads, or you're going to be putting a lot of money in your cursing jar there if you use the Phillips heads and things like that. These things go in nice. We did put glue on here, I didn't show that step, and we're verifying that it's nice and square before we move on from here. So there we go, we have a shim. Now normally a feeder shim would be just like this, no bottom to it, nothing else. It would just be a spacer so you could put a feeder inside and stack it on your box, but that's not what we're doing here. 
We're going to put interior pine, and I'm going to show you how I do that. And I'm going to leave B space underneath of it as well. So we can put feed of all types under and in this feeding shim. So we're at 14 and a quarter there, and then we're at 18 and an eighth, just under 18 and an eighth. Remember, put it all together, screw it together, square it up before you take these dimensions to make that interior. And I wrote down 14 and a quarter by 18 and an eighth, and I put a little down arrow there to show me that it is just under an eighth, so I'll know when I go to cut it. Now I'm using this big, thick piece of pine. First, I'm going to cut the lengths, but they're not going to be exact yet. I'm going to show you why. Remember, these edges are rough cut, and they're not parallel. So I'm going to have to square this up later. And so I'm going to create a straight edge on one side of each of these boards. Again, this Diablo blade. I think that means devil termite. And uh, we're going to cut that off there. And we're going to do the next one. And if there's any bow or anything to the wood, you want, of course, to pick the side that's the truest when you make this initial cut. And this just gives us a nice straight side to the board that we can now use to cut a parallel cut. So now we're going to cut to the dimension that we need. Flip it over there. Turn on the devil termite blade. And now we have perfectly parallel ends. So what did that do? Well, that means that uh, what we cut on the miter saw may not be square anymore. So we're going to have to go back to that. And that's why I cut these larger than I needed to. When you're using dimensional lumber, you don't have to worry about that. You've already got the uh, perfectly parallel lines and they're nice and square and everything else. This is rough cut stuff. Nice thick pine. It's going to be the bottom of my feeder shim. Don't forget to bury that blade. Don't want anybody getting cut there. Anyway, now I cut the pieces together because I want them to be absolutely perfect. So once I have that, and you can see the bottom one was a little bit off there. So they weren't quite parallel when we began, and now we're cutting the final exact dimensions I need. Because remember, this is a floating shim that's going to go inside that frame that we made. So this is going to compose the bottom of it, which will be like an inner cover integrated to the feeder shim. Nice and thick, and again, this is just pine. I used a really good wood for the outside. Now the other thing is we have to cut that center hole because we're going to use a wrap-it round feeder, and you want to give your bees access to this feeder shim. So I'm going to put that as near the center as possible. This is going to really be critical if you're making one for a 8-frame shim. With the 10-frame, uh, there's lots of extra space here, so this will be off-center a little bit. And I'm using a 2-inch Forstner bit. So I'm going to draw that through there. Look at these nice clean ribbons flipping off of the camera there. Nice sharp bit. And we'll cut through that, and this is done before we glue up the pieces to compose that uh, inner cover. There you go. So when we put this shim together, we're going to clamp and glue that up, and uh, you don't get a lot of play time here. This video actually took me a long time to make. I know we're doing this in just 14 or 15 minutes here, and now there it is inside. Edges are nice and square, and now I have these shims. They are 3 eighths of an inch thick. And that's because we're going to create B space underneath this uh, inner cover that's part of this feeder shim. So I'm going to pull that out, put the spacers underneath here, and then when I put this in, after we glue it up, we're going to put wood glue all around the circumference. Just going to test fit it here first. Always test fit first. And now we know it's going to set there, and we'll have three inch space, three eighths of an inch of space underneath. I also cut these 90 degree corners and. Uh, we glue those in there too, and then we put a nice sealant with silicon. We run that bead everywhere because we don't want those mites. We don't want small hive beetles to have a place to hide. This is the underside. That's that 3 8 inch gap we created. And I'm showing that it's all sealed up too. So this is it from the bottom. Look how basic this is. You can't get a more basic joint design. Uh, even with rough cut lumber, you can just kind of wing it as you go. Remember, this is not critical. It's just nice heavy duty stuff. Now we're going to go corner to corner here because I'm going to find the center of this face piece here. And then uh, that's where we're going to drill that upper entrance, which is also going to be a vent where it's going to be uh, just closed off. So we can use this feeder shim for a lot of different things. It has an integrated inner cover to it. So this can be uh, set up with just a roof on it. Now, if you do not have the rapid rounding there, you're going to have to put an inner cover over the top of it. But when you have the rapid round feeders in here, uh, 
you do not have to have an inner cover on top of this. So this is an interesting, really basic thing. And I hope this is satisfying those of you who wanted to know how to make it. If you have other questions, just write them down in the uh, discussion beneath this. Just make a comment there. I use an inch and an eighth for that upper entrance hole. Most entrance holes are under an inch generally, but this one we have control over. You have the queen excluder, you have the vent, and you can close it off completely. So again, this is for year round use. And I put some stainless steel washers there and I have a stainless steel screw holding it in place. Here's another really ugly homemade uh, bottom board. Super thick again, because I'm using this rough cut lumber again. And this one is all glued up and then of course sealed again with silicon around the edges. Just trying to see how this thing's gonna hold up. Next thing, I also built this uh, slatted rack here that I'm gonna put in this year. And I'm gonna put a few of these out in the BR just to see how they do. And if you're doing oxalic vapor and things like that, this gives uh, a standoff space so your bees don't get burned by that uh, vaporizer when you stick it in there. So we're gonna put that out this year and I'm just showing it because we're creating a miniature fancy hive here for demonstration purposes. Now we have a deep box that goes on top of that. And we're gonna to wanna to put some uh, pre-waxed frames in there. So there they are, we have 10 of them. Now this is where if you're just starting out, you would be using this deep box by itself and you wanna make sure that those starting bees get lots of feed and that's where this feeder shim comes in. So we're gonna put that on there and what would you do? Depending on the time of year, it's early spring. So we're gonna put a rapid round feeder in there and you can start with dry feed, but you know we're at the time where we can actually put uh, two to one syrup in there or one to one syrup, and that's by weight. One pound of uh, granulated sugar, for example, to one pound of distilled water, mix it all up, put it in there, and now even when it rains, your bees have access to at least sugar syrup. Now, I do not recommend that you put uh, dry pollen protein in there. Also, this shows that the position uh, allows you to put that telescoping cover on and it does not cover that upper entrance that we just made. Now I'm showing these Ultra B patties. These are high protein patties again. I just looked at a study that was done that uh, these actually were very good for the bees and they did cause a stronger brood buildup in spring. So we're going to experiment with them, but I'm showing you that even with these thick patties on top of the frames there, we put this feeder shim, remember we have a 3 8 inch B space underneath of it, so it doesn't smash down on these patties and you don't have to push the patties down. There they are. Plenty of space for the bees to be on top of and under the patties while they feed on it. And we've got the rapid round in there going through that center hole. And that's why we space the patties out so that feeder could be accessed also. So if the bees need the protein patties, they can get to them. And if they need to get up in there and get sugar syrup, they can get to that as well. You only want to put sugar syrup on when they can fly out and whether it's warm enough, which it is now. It just happens to be rainy. So we're putting these Man Lake patties out there. We have that dry pollen substitute available out there west of the bee yard this year. And then let's say your bees start to build up as they do in spring. You want to be ready to expand that colony right away and expand the hive dimensions. So now we have a medium super on top. Now when I put on a medium super like this, I'm just gonna let the bees fill that with honey so I don't put a queen excluder in there. I'm not gonna draw this off. And then we're gonna put the feeder shim up above that. There again, because once they start building brood and once they kick in and they commit to that, if it starts raining and you get a couple weeks of rain, you're gonna be happy to have a feeder shim like this on top so you can at least keep that sugar syrup coming. Now if I took that uh, rapid round out, I would have to put an inner cover on there. Now what are the bees gonna do with that space now? Well, they're gonna get up in there and they're gonna create uh, lots of burr comb and that's gonna be chunk honey for me. I'm gonna carve that out later and put it right in jars and then I'm gonna pour honey around it and I'm gonna use this box to harvest that. So there you have the whole thing. Bottom board, slatted rack, deep box, medium super, and then your feeder shim. I hope I answered all your questions. If you have more questions about it, put them down in the comment section. I'll be more than happy to answer those. And look for another Frequently Asked Questions video next week. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope your bees are making it this spring.